Whoa, didn't see you there. Want to talk about the 4080 Ti? Well, too bad because we're going to talk about it anyway. But before that, if you want to find a CPU that's actually in stock and really great value, I'll have an affiliate link to the i9-10850K. It's a 10-core, 20-thread CPU, and it's actually $50 cheaper at only $400 right now than the 5800X. So, you know, that's just a really, really great deal in my opinion. So, again, if you want to find a CPU that's great, it's in stock, go ahead and click that affiliate link in the description below. And, of course, I do get a small kickback from every single purchase. But in any case, let's get into that video. So it looks like some specs for the RTX 4080 Ti were just potentially leaked out over on Twitter by Twitter user Copite7Kimi and they were shared over on VideoCards.com where they put together a nice little chart that I will be sharing in this video and you know this does look like a really interesting GPU because it's supposedly going to have 71% more shaders than the RTX 3080 Ti or I'm sorry the RTX 3090 which is an enormous jump in shader count because we just had already an enormous jump going from the RTX 2080 Ti to the RTX 3090 so I thought thought to myself, there's no way this can be true, but you know what? It does look pretty accurate, but the question is, is this actually a 4080 Ti, or is it going to be the next generation's version of, say, a Tesla card or some sort of big compute card? Well, that's something we don't know for sure yet, but first, let's go ahead and take a look at these leaked specs here. So, it looks like over on Twitter, Copite7Kimi, which, by the way, there will be links to all my sources in the description below, said that it would be a 7x6 structure for the GPU, and so video cards in 3dcenter.org went ahead and put that information together to give us what seems to be the full specs of what this GPU could potentially be, you know, minus the amount of memory that's going to be available, but it looks like it could actually end up having 12 graphics processing clusters, 72 texture processing clusters, and 144 streaming multiprocessors. And if you know anything about NVIDIA's GPU architectures, you'll know that right now in every single SM, there's 128 FP32 cores. So if you take 144 times 128 FP32 cores, that gives you a total of 18,432 FP32 cores, or as NVIDIA likes to call them CUDA cores, which again is a 71% increase over the current Ampere GA102, which is in the RTX 3090. So yeah, that's an enormous increase. But this does beg the question, is this GPU actually going to be 71% faster? Because although it does have 71% more cores, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to scale perfectly. In fact, almost nothing ever does scale perfectly. So it's more likely that it won't be quite, you know, 71% faster just because it has that many more cores. But it's also possible that it could be even faster than that, depending on the type of IPC gains they're able to get. So if you look at the Ampere GPU architecture in every single streaming multiprocessor, you'll notice that it has a block of FP32 cores, then it has a block of FP32 slash int. And the problem with this type of architecture is that anytime an integer operation comes across that streaming multiprocessor, it actually can't use half of those FP32 cores because they're in the same block. Now, I'm not entirely sure why this happens, but it is just the case. And so if they're able to go in and move the FP32 cores to their own block and you have FP32 plus FP32 plus plus integer, that could actually give you an enormous uplift in IPC. So along with having more CUDA cores, these things could actually be technically more efficient. So you could be getting somewhere, you know, over 100% more performance, which is just absolutely crazy. Now, even though that's technically possible, that's probably not going to be the case, because let's be honest, if NVIDIA brings out a GPU that's over twice as fast as their current stuff right now, well, then that's going to put them in a bind to, you know, what are they going to do the next time? And NVIDIA does like to give you, you know, roughly between 30 to 50% gains every single generation generation. So that's probably what I'm expecting to get out of this. So if the 102 die does end up actually having 71% more CUDA cores, well, that is going to be pretty crazy, but I would expect it to probably give you roughly somewhere only around 50% more performance, which don't get me wrong. That's a lot of performance increase, but it's not going to be 71%. I mean, that is absolutely crazy. And if this does end up being, you know, 70% or more faster than the current stuff that's out there in the RTX 3090, well, then I would expect this GPU to actually be some sort of a compute card. So let's say that it's not the 8102. Maybe it's the 8100, and then the 8102 would actually only have, you know, somewhere around 50% more shaders. To me, that sounds a little bit more reasonable, but it is technically possible that this could be the 8102. I mean, again, last time around, we had, you know, 4,608 shaders, and we moved all the way up to 10,752 shaders. So, it's certainly possible if they change around their architecture. It just, to me, seems like kind of the wrong move for a gaming architecture to be introducing this many more shaders when, you know, like I mentioned earlier, they could just rearrange the way that their architecture is put together and they could actually get a whole lot more performance that way so that kind of makes a lot more sense to me so you know yes this is definitely possible it could have this many more shaders if it does have this many more shaders it probably won't scale perfectly but you know either way it looks like these new GPUs are going to be coming out fairly soon here in terms of previous cycles um, I would expect these new GPUs to probably launch somewhere around 18 months which is you know that's pretty typical considering if you look back at you know NVIDIA's release schedule they do like to release new GPUs 
is around every 18 months. But this time around, I wouldn't be surprised if they released a new GPU, you know, in sooner than 18 months. Maybe they get it out in 16 months since the RTX 3000 series was launched, you know, looking at the RTX 3080. So we could be looking at a launch cycle where, you know, these uh, new cards could be launching early 2022, which is really, really soon here, you know, when you compare it to maybe how long it took for us to get the RTX 3000 series and the RTX 2000 series. But, you know, either way, I think this GPU is going to be absolutely monstrous. And I think that NVIDIA is going to be pulling out all the stops this time because I think AMD got a little bit too close for comfort with the RTX 3000 series. I mean, you look at the 6900 XT and it actually got really, really close to dethroning NVIDIA. And NVIDIA absolutely does not want that. So I think next time around, you're going to see a massive leap out of NVIDIA because AMD is also planning to have a pretty, you know, huge jump in terms of graphics power as well. So I think NVIDIA wants to beat them to the punch. So let's say, you know, AMD gets another 50% in per, uh, performance per watt improvement. Well, maybe NVIDIA is just going to get a straight 60 or 70% performance improvement overall, which is absolutely crazy. But you know what? I love new graphics cards. I really want to see these things in action. So I just can't wait for more of these rumors to keep popping up, even though it is pretty early at this point. I mean, you still can't even get your hands in an RTX 3000 series card. And here we are talking about the RTX 4000 series. This is getting pretty wacky. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these upcoming RTX 4000 series cards? Do you think that they're actually going to be 70% faster? Or do you think that that's going to be just a little bit too high of hopes to be having? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.